Hey folks, we'll live, we're live. I'm gonna say hi in the comments here. Hey Barbara, good to have you. Uh, I'm glad to see that the comment stream is working. Sometimes I'm not able to actually see the comments. The way I have the event positioned right now, I can actually see the comments as we roll, which is gonna be cool because that way I can kind of respond as, as people come in. So uh, glad to have you. Let's, let's go ahead and uh, get started. There, there's quite a lot that I want to uh, talk to you about today. Things that will really, really help you immeasurably. <laughs> um, today's topic has to do with lead generation. Hey, Ann, good to have you uh, in here. I'm glad you've been able to join over the last few weeks. Uh, thanks for coming. As you know, we are, I call this week 18, right? Because we started at the beginning of the year and uh, after 18 weeks, uh, we are at the point now, really the, the point of we know what our overall strategy is. Uh, hey, Travis, uh, I haven't seen you in a long time, man. <laughs> Good to have you on here, Travis. Hopefully Hannah's with you and watching. Um, but we started this journey understanding because there, there, there's a chronology to all of this, right? Hey, Todd, good to have you. There's a chronology to all this where you've got to have the strategy in your brain before you go out and execute. Okay, now that's an important point. Hi, Chris, glad to have you. Nice sunglasses. The, the strategy is important, just like driving a car, right? If somebody buys you a Lamborghini, well, it's nice to have a Lamborghini, but if you don't know how to drive it, how much good does it do you? So what I'm going to talk to you about today are marketing methods that are analogous to having a Lamborghini because you will drive, you will hyper drive a ton of leads your way. Hey, Lex. Hey, Jason. Good to have you in here. And Chris uh, uh, as well. And Vincent, what's going on? I, I didn't because I didn't see you, Vincent. That's the only reason I didn't say hi. Uh, I think I gave you a complex because I'm harder on you than I have been on the others. Mostly because you're a doctor. The fact that you're a doctor, uh, you know, probably in my own perception, I raised the bar a little bit uh, for you because you went through all that that uh, tough schooling with with biology and chemistry and all that kind of stuff to learn exactly how your eyeballs work. So anyway, man. Um, that's probably the reason, but look, this is, and Hey Joseph, this is like a Lamborghini and because you're going to drive so many leads if you do things my way, but I'm just going to tell you straight out, doesn't do you any good. If you don't understand the strategy that we deploy with the leads that come in, just like having a Lamborghini might make your house look sexy with it in the driveway. Um, uh, or you, if you take pictures with it, but, or, or like a D bag, right? If you take pictures with it, I always think that's goofy when people do that kind of stuff. But, um, I, I guess actually I, I, I might be speaking out of school because I think there is an ad, uh, where I did that one time, but I just felt stupid. The ad agency made me do it. Um, but the, cause I don't actually, I, um, I'm, I'm not cheap, but I, you know, I don't buy that kind of stuff normally. Those are like depreciating kinds of things. Um, I buy stupider stuff like, like sports book tickets on the, uh, Chicago bulls or something like that. So <laughs> anyway, um, so hyperdriver, it's like having a Lamborghini, but if you don't know how to drive, it doesn't, it, it doesn't do you any good. So um, I don't want you to go out and implement what I'm going to teach you today if you don't understand the strategy. You've got to get to a point where you understand the strategy, which is why we covered all that in the first few weeks of this 21-week uh, training here. First, learn the strategies. 
understand that we can buy any house from any seller. We can profit on any seller situation. Uh, you have to learn all those strategies, but it allows us to be consultative with the seller. Now to do that uh, effectively with the seller, you have to then be able to communicate effectively to the seller what their alternatives are, what the trade-offs are. There's trade-offs with everything in life. And there, there's a trade-off selling the traditional way versus selling uh, in the way that we wanna buy it. Our trade-off, the good news is, gets them a lot more money, but they have to be a little bit more patient. If they can't absorb that patience, then they're gonna get less money, which is fine. A lot of people choose that route. We can help them with that as well. So I went through all of that. You have, you have to get good at communicating that. So there's a certain script that we use for our approach with the seller that uh, helps that understanding crystallize for the seller. Now, nobody just says, okay, yeah, let's do it. There's always questions. There's always objections. There's always concerns. And you have to be available to answer those, those questions. And you have to do it in a way that demonstrates your competency, demonstrates your integrity, demonstrates your competency, demonstrates your, your expertise. There's, there's, there's really, Mark, so in the, in the question of how many strategies are there, remember there's three, but there's several deal structures that, that come under those three main strategies. There's seven primary ones. So, you know, Mark, you should go into Kajabi and, and go through those first modules. By the way, since you're, in my, you're one of my private clients, uh, you know, we'll be going over that on, on Monday, okay? But there, look, you're either gonna get a deal that's so good you close right away, either because the price is good or the terms are, are, are good. We close on that right away, we go at risk before we even have our, our buyer coming at us, okay? Before we even have our buyer placed, okay? Or there's gonna be something about the deal that makes us wanna line our buyer up first so we get a longer period of time to close. We'll give ourselves 90 days to close. And if the seller won't do anything that fits into those two buckets there, then they're looking at selling the house for full retail price to an owner-occupant buyer uh, who qualifies for a bank loan and who is definitely gonna be represented by a realtor. So we incorporate the strategy that goes along with that. And then there's a whole bunch of deal structures that fall underneath that. So, um, you know, that I, could, I could talk about that for hours. So, so go into those trainings and go through those. And if you have questions, hit me up on Messenger, Mark. Um, but you need to be able to answer the questions that the sellers have based on which um, tactic we're gonna deploy with them to get them what they want out of their house. That deals with the objection handling, which we went through like for three or four weeks, uh, you know, on these Facebook Lives. Once you have that, you have the strategy, you have the approach, you have the dialogue down with the seller. Well, now you're going to memorialize an agreement. You're going to cement what you spoke to the seller about in an agreement so that you can direct the professionals how to close it, usually a lawyer or a title company, and you close the deal and now you own or control the property and you have an asset in hand. Uh, and then you make money because uh, you know we sell it, which I'm gonna talk about in uh, week 19 and week 20. And week 21 is gonna be fun because then I'm gonna tell you what to do with all the money you make. And believe it or not, it's not put it into real estate because we buy as much real estate as we want without using any of our own money or any of our own credit. So that, that'll be, that's always an interesting uh, topic. Now I want you to note something. There's 20 weeks of this. And what did I just say? We're gonna talk about how we sell these in week 19 and, and in week 20, the last two weeks of this. That means 18 of the 20 weeks have been invested, have been spent on how do we acquire the property. The acquisitions is the hardest part of this. The dispositions is super simple. Now, market conditions. These market conditions compound that scenario, right? It's a, it's a seller's market, right? So it's harder to acquire, very easy to sell. Well, what if that flips? What if it becomes a buyer's market? Well, it's gonna be very easy to acquire, but a little bit harder to sell. However, our market is so much bigger than the market of owner-occupant, retail-paying, loan-qualified buyers, because there's a lot more people who have 
money and income who don't meet the underwriting guidelines of JP Morgan Chase and Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and you know Citibank and all the others that are you know putting conventional loans out there. Uh, those are the people that we can put into houses and guess what? They have a passion and a desire for a house just as much as anybody else does. Don't underestimate the power of the American dream. The, the, the uh, passion that people have to have control or ownership of a home that's their very own versus living in an apartment or a crappy rental. Okay, so we only really need to spend a couple of weeks on that and I'm going to show you how to do it on autopilot in week 19 and, and week 20. So, so where we're at is you've got a strategy, you've got an approach, you've got the dialogue, the ebb and flow that occurs, and then, and then you've got the ability to put these deals under contract so that you have the, the asset. And then you're gonna close on them and you're gonna get paid. And once you've made a little bit of money, what happens is then people want to really scale the business up. Because it's like, you know, once you start having the money roll in on these deals, you start thinking, well, how can I do more of this with even less of my time involved? And then that's where you can take advantage of what I'm talking about here, which is the Lamborghini of real estate, which is my, my hyperdrive system for, for generating leads. Okay. So, uh, and by the way, I'll just make mention that, um, you know, my hyperdrive system on the uh, open market is sold to real estate investors. It's not even like the full throttle system, basically a white labeled uh, uh, copy of that, you know, that I've approved, uh, that sells for $30,000, okay? My coaching, which is a lifetime of coaching, is a fraction of that, like, uh, you know, way less than a third of that. Okay, so for those of you who haven't jumped on a Zoom call yet and you have the means to invest a, a, just a few thousand dollars into coaching, you, you're making a big mistake by not getting on the Zoom call. Now, I can't guarantee I'm going to take you into the program. I don't take everyone into the program, but I, but I can at least give you some direction on uh, what to do. And if we think it's a good fit, um, you know, then I, you know, then potentially I can take you in. I don't want anyone to be mad if I don't take you into the program. That's why I do a lot of this free stuff on here, but I can't offer my personal coaching for a lifetime, um, you know, to everybody. I'm, I'm playing for deal flow. I'm playing to pick the right people to come into the program so that I can get them very solid at this, making money, and then down the line, there's a good chance that we'll joint venture on things um, where deals come across their desk that are too big for their britches. Big commercial deals, um, land deals, casino, hotel, residential development, and I can get involved in that because there's no deal where the math makes sense that I can't get the financing for. Many of you know, um, you know, I'm raising over a hundred million. Well, I'm raising money at a hundred million dollar valuation for a biotech company that is way, way more risky than real estate. And we get we get investors, you know, hand over fist, ready to pump money into those things. So when I come with a real estate project, it's super, super simple. So I'm playing for that potential relationship, which is why I'm willing to coach people for you know for life. Uh, but not everybody. But everybody can get on a Zoom call. Okay, and I can at least give you some direction. I'll definitely do that. I'm just not guaranteeing out that I can take everybody. Um, but you should definitely do that. Um, well, thank you, Matt. I appreciate that very much. Matt is uh, one of those folks who uh, uh, did come into the program. So I'm glad, I'm glad you're having a good experience. <laughs> um, yeah, Rob. Now, Rob, Rob, who just commented that raising that kind of money is spectacular. Rob is... Uh, uh, was, I should say, a, a bond trader in Wall Street. He's got some of the same uh, friends, I think. And uh, he's been pushing me to do this as a special purpose acquisition company, which I don't like to do because it's, because, you know, it's, you know, you, I don't know if you know how those work, but basically you give, you give someone you trust a boatload of money and uh, they don't even know what they're investing in. They just trust the principal. Um, I'd rather actually present to my investors what it is that they're investing in instead of just get a bunch of money and then go pick something. But you could do that, you know what I mean? I think actually real estate lends itself well to a SPAC because I could definitely do a real estate SPAC. Somebody gives me you know, $10 million or something like that and then I go acquire the perfect real estate project, they'll probably make money on it because I'm not gonna make a mistake on that. So I guess it's not that uh, bad. Pump and dump, there you go, Rob. <laughs> that is what happens, right? And I've seen it happen. 
Um, but anyway, that's that's for a, a, another topic. Um, maybe we'll talk about that in week 21 when we talk about what to do with the money. Um, all right, so so once you, so, so what the point that I was trying to make is regardless of the market conditions, there are a lot of people who have money, have income, but don't qualify for a loan. And, and it's very easy to sell these properties in any market condition, just particularly easy now. Because if you think it's a hot market for the qualified buyers, think how hot it is for the people who don't qualify for a loan. They even have a harder time finding these houses. So, and we're the only game in town to put them, put them in there so we can command really big down payments on things. I had a guy the other day, my clients, you know, saw, um, you know, uh, you know, a guy willing to give me a hundred grand on a $400,000 house. That, I mean, uh, you know, non-refundable, meaning he might not even close on the thing. Um, and then, you know, and then I get the debt paid down. I get the monthly cash flow that comes in. I get the, a premium price on it. I mean, it's, it's amazing what we've been able to generate in this uh, environment. So, so there's that. Um, and what happens is once you start doing these deals, you are going to want to make your life a little bit easier. So you start spending a little bit of money on marketing instead of just going after the usual suspects. Usual suspects being for sale by owners, for rent by owners, expired listings, uh, sign scouts, uh, pre-foreclosures. You can generate those leads really inexpensively or even free. And you can get plenty of deals uh, from that uh, avatar, if you will, because you have a strategy that allows you to convert any seller who is just willing to sell their house. If they're willing to sell the house, we have a way to make money on it regardless of what they do. In fact, they will be doing something that we can service and can profit on. It's just a matter of whether they'll do it with you or not. That's why I focus heavily on just being authentic, transparent, genuine, truthful with folks it's because people want to buy from people that they trust. And then, and, then, and then along the way, be consultative, demonstrate your expertise, demonstrate your competencies um, so that they know they're getting character and competency and that's a winning combination to get deals done. Your conversion ratio will go, go through the roof with that attitude. All right, so I, like I said last week, highly recommend that you do not do what I'm about to tell you until you've done at least a deal, maybe two, maybe three. The reason is, that I don't want you throwing money at marketing until you know that you can convert because otherwise we won't know if the problem if you're not getting deals is the marketing or your skill set. But if we got the skill set down because everybody can convert with the organic leads I talked about last week. So go ahead and just do a couple there. Then we can throw the money at the, at, at the marketing and, and scale things up. Okay, so it's really important to, to do it that way. Because look, if you don't know how to drive a Lamborghini, having a Lamborghini isn't gonna get you there faster. So let's make sure we can drive, take the driving lessons in the little Nissan, the little Prius, and then jump in your Lamborghini. You, 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 you're you better off learning and then driving a car like that, okay? All right, now, now let's get into the real meat of this here, which is uh, what I said this and, and I didn't want to put this out in the email for if any of you came in from the email that I sent versus me just inviting you from the from the group here um, I don't really want to promote just to a broad list this strategy because I want it to last longer um, it's still the greatest thing going in real estate and not enough people are taking advantage of it but if I just broadcast it out to everyone people who have no interest in this group or you know you know in getting training um, it's just going to become too pervasive and it's going to end up affecting my clients and us. Um, but the fact that you guys are here with me, I'm totally willing to share it. And people have to know how to run it, which is the other thing. Guys, if you, didn't, if you don't get coaching, my telling you how to do this, it's like me telling you how to drive. Can I tell you how to drive? Can I tell your 14 or 15 year old, you know, how to drive through videos? No, you got to get in the car and do it with them. That's why coaching is so important. Don't let your kid drive because they learned how to drive on YouTube or playing those video games. They need a coach, okay? And it's the same thing here. You need a coach. You, 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 and that's why you should get on a, a, a Zoom call. And you know, if I'm not uh, gonna take you in, I can recommend somebody who will where you can you know, get the type of coaching that, that you probably need. Um, but jump on a Zoom call. It's a smart thing to do. The, so, here's, so here's the, uh, the trick. 
as far as making your marketing work for you. What people are doing with online ads, the ads that say, we buy houses, any area, any condition, price, or fast cash for your house. When you see those ads on Facebook, and I click on them because I wanna see, you know, uh, and, and it's, it's like 99% of the people that are advertising on Facebook are doing it suboptimally for real estate. And the reason I know that it's suboptimal is because the link in the ad, now listen to me now guys, listen to me now because this is the point. The link on the ad sends the person clicking on the ad to their website. Now that sounds normal, right? That's what you would normally do. That's what it does and what I'm telling you is that is, is not the optimal way of doing it by a, a magnitude of about probably a hundred times. My, the way I run my ads is a hundred times more effective and I'm gonna explain that to you. But I'm gonna explain it in the right context. Let me explain to you why running the ad directly to your website is a, you are wasting so much money. Now, you still get a return on investment on it, otherwise people wouldn't do it. That's how much money you can make in real estate. You can act like a complete goof do goofy stuff that makes no business sense whatsoever when you have an alternative and still make a killing in real estate because there's that much money to be made in real estate. In other words, you can screw up and still make money. It's like you could take you know, a three-year-old fishing at Lake Mead where the carp, have you ever gone to Lake Mead at the docks where you know, the fish are just coming out, if people throw popcorn and the fish are jumping all over each other? Well, yeah, if I drop a line in there, I'm gonna pull a fish out, okay? so. Real estate is kind of like that. So they can get away with, with doing things that aren't optimized. But just think how, how many more deals you'll get when you, when you are optimized. Now, here's the context. Just think about how people use Facebook. They use Facebook the same way they use TikTok, right? You're waiting for your kid to get out of gymnastics class. You're scrolling, 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 looking for cat pictures, and then boom, here comes an ad. Maybe you click on the ad, right? Um, you're at work, you're scrolling, scrolling, looking at sports scores, you know, looking for highlights of the games, boom, here comes an ad. And maybe you click on the, the, the ad. You're sitting at a stoplight. I see it all the time, people on their phone at the, at the stoplight. You click on this ad, uh, you know, because you are thinking of selling your house. Now, now what happens? Well, your kid comes out of gymnastics class, okay, and you can't be engaged with the ad anymore. The stoplight turns green. Well, you can't be engaged with the ad anymore. Your boss comes walking by you at work. Well, you can't be engaged with the ad anymore. So if I ran them to my website and now their focus has been lost because the kid comes out of school, the light turns green or the boss walks by, I've lost them for good. I spent money on that ad, but I didn't probably get them. They probably won't even be able to find the ad again or the website that they, that they clicked over to. So what you want to do is when they click on the ad or tap the ad, the ad sends them to Messenger and Facebook is set up for that to work. Now there's a, there's a way that we do that. I use another platform called ManyChat that combines with Facebook and it allows you to send personal messages and automated messages over a sequence of time. But here's, here's the point. When somebody clicks on my ad, I have their name immediately. When somebody clicks on somebody else's ad that runs them to a website, I don't have their name. I have no ability to follow up unless they fill out a form. Why well, ain't no one trying to fill out a form while they're waiting for their kid to come out of gymnastics or while their boss is walking by or while they're sitting in a stoplight? I don't have any of that contact information. I just, you know, I, I don't even know that they clicked on the ad. When you click on my ad, it goes right to Messenger and there's their name. There's their name. Uh, sitting right there and then they get an, they, they, they get a uh, message that allows them to go to my website if they want to but but it also allows me to, to communicate with them regardless if their kid comes out of um, class or the stoplight changes so I kind of marked it like this what most people do is they run the ad directly to the web and then hope to get a contact what I'm suggesting you do is you run the ad Okay, you automatically get the contact because you're running it to Messenger. 
Then from Messenger, you can direct them to the web and then you have the chance to follow up. Why do you have the chance to follow up? Because you already have their name. Okay, so let me show you graphically what, what this looks like here. What this looks like is this. When I go into my inbox, uh, because somebody clicked on my ad, I've got all of these people over here, all of these names, okay? Whether they do anything, they don't, maybe they don't, they don't do anything. I know that every single one of these people over here on this side clicked on my ad, and that means I can be like, hey, I noticed that you clicked on my ad that I buy houses for full price. You know, is that something you're interested in doing? And if they say, no, I was thinking about it maybe three months from now, I just thought it was cool. I still have them on a follow-up list and I can send them stuff and be engaged with them perpetually. So I'm, I, I get so much more value out of running the ad because I have everybody that engaged with its name and their messenger, unless they unsubscribe, which is you know frankly pretty rare unless you irritate the hell out of them. If I run them directly to my carrot website or, or a website, if they don't fill out that form, done. If they don't fill out your, that whole contact, which nobody has time to do anyway because that's not the way they use Facebook. They don't use it like they're using YouTube where they're watching these long videos. They weren't even planning on seeing your ad. They saw your ad in the middle of looking at the highlights from the, you know, from the games or you know, from watching Will Smith slap Chris Rock or whatever. They weren't, they weren't trying to um, see your ad. But if they click mine, I've got their name, you know, and I can do all kinds of follow-up. Here, I have to depend on them to take, you know, pretty aggressive action because that's not what they were planning on doing when they were on Facebook. So you just don't get the same bang for your buck. You're depending on your ad and your website to do too much work for you. And deals aren't made from a fancy ad or from a website. They're made from a conversation. You either texting, so they get a, get a feel for your personality, your character, your competence. You know, you're, you know what it is you're trying to do to help them um, or from a phone call that comes out of that texting conversation. That is the way, guys, that you will get 100 times performance out of your Facebook ads when you are ready to run those ads. Just think if the advertisers that spent a million dollars on a Super Bowl ad, everybody who was sitting on the couch who was thinking, wow, that's pretty cool. Maybe it's an ad for a trip to Hawaii you know, like Hawaiian Airlines, you know, wow, I actually am thinking about a Hawaiian Airlines trip, but then they don't do anything. But think of that Super Bowl ad. If somebody did see the ad on the Super Bowl and they're like Hawaiian Airlines, yeah, I want to take a trip. And then all of a sudden, you know, it somehow was communicated to the advertiser that that person had that thought. Well, think about the follow-up mechanisms that would be in play and how much money those advertisers uh, would make if they knew exactly who was interested in in their ad, who actually engaged with their with their ad without having to fill out a whole form, right? The minute they click, boom, I'm in, I'm in. And now there's a relationship that I can uh, use for marketing purposes, for discussion, to set myself apart from the pack until they are ready to sell their house. Or if they're ready to sell their house right now, we can get those deals done. Now, you know, and, and I've showed this in, in real time, like the folks that are in my group have, have seen me run, you know, hyperdrive in real time and then, and then see, you know, I, I actually have the recorded calls, the recorded text conversations and the check that I end up getting from getting those deals done. Um, I think I put one in the training, you know, it was, it was only like 18 grand uh, is the one that I put in the training, but just to show you a, a very average deal that you can pick up, you know, running hyperdrive. You know, I've got other deals that I've, that I've shown that are, you know, uh, you know, much bigger than that where you get into six figures um, that, uh, that we have case studies on and whatnot. So look, if you want to do real estate, you need to learn the, the pathway. There's three reasons why people um, fail in real estate. Either they have the wrong pathway, they have the right pathway, but with no guidance, or they just don't do the work. I can't help with the latter. If you won't do the work, you're not gonna be successful here. This is not get rich quick. You can't sit on the couch, eat hot Cheetos, watch Netflix, and just have it rain checks in your lap because you signed up with me. That's not gonna happen. It's also unlikely that you're gonna have success if you don't get coaching. This is the right pathway, but if you don't have coaching, someone to guide you along the way, it doesn't have to be me, by the way. I'm not the only one who knows how to do this. There's other you know, good coaches out there. You're just gonna pay 10 times more and not get the actual coach. <laughs> you're gonna get a salesperson on a phone call and then you're gonna get one of their employees helping you. 
is better than not having anything though, right? Uh, but um, anyway, um, if you're gonna pursue this, 18 out of 20, right? Nine tenths, 90% of our focus needs to be on how to acquire properties properly. And that's what we've covered over these first 18 weeks. Now, next week, I'm gonna go through what I call the MLS plus, plus, plus strategy. There's a three pronged attack to selling these houses quickly so that we know once we buy, we already made money. It's on paper, we haven't realized the cash yet, but uh, when you get that contract back, you've already made money because I'm gonna show you how we, we have a three pronged attack to get our buyers, I'm gonna show you that next week and then the week after that i'm going to show you how we run hyperdrive for buyers and how that conversation looks with the buyer so that you know you get a good buyer you don't have problems and and you set yourself up where you can set it and forget it there's no landlording here all you do is collect and um and they're responsible for for everything and how we set that up and then we'll round the whole thing out with what do you do with the money which is always fun maybe we'll have glenn you know talk about his spectacular opportunities up there on on, on wall street uh, oh, hey, Jovan, I, I see you in here now. Um, so, okay, guys, so uh, that'll do it for today. If you have other questions or things you want to follow up on, hit me up on Messenger, or you can put a comment in here. If you're watching this on replay, same thing goes. Um, I did put a video out uh, last week for those of you who wanted it. Uh, for those of you who haven't uh, booked a Zoom call, um, I strongly suggest you do that. If you're unsure on whether you wanna do that or not, let me push you a little bit to think on how to think about things. Just type in like video in the comments and I'll go ahead and, and send you a special video that I've, that I've made for you to kind of understand your, your alternatives, your options. Hey Manuel, good to have you on here. And, um, and other than that, uh, it's another beautiful Saturday out here in Vegas. I mean, you can probably see the sun is shining bright. Uh, and, I know I'm going to have a, a, a good time today. I hope you all have a wonderful Saturday. And if there's anything I can ever do to help you, please feel free to reach out. Uh, but I really appreciate you joining me. And remember, run those ads to Messenger, not direct to your website. And if you want to know how to learn to do it, very precise, step by step by step by step by step by step, you got to get into my client program because it's way too much information for me to try to share in a, in a free Facebook group. But you can get a Facebook agency to help you with it. They'll understand what I'm talking about. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll catch y'all later. Have a good one, and we'll see y'all next week. If I, you know, uh, other than the clients, I'll see you on the on the call on Monday. All right, guys. Adios. Ciao.